Hello, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of Mies van der Rohe, one of the most influential architects of all time. And today I'm here to show you how not to draw an AutoCAD. That's right, how not to draw. And I'm going to show you how to draw an AutoCAD using WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. But before we jump into that, again, welcome to my channel. And here's a look at my YouTube channel page. I have a lot of videos here. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and click on the little bell for the notifications. There are a ton of videos here. Videos, this one is about AutoCAD. I have videos on Rhino, Grasshopper, 3ds Max, Photoshop, 3D printing. So there's something there for everyone. Also, connect with me on Instagram. It's my first name, Alfonso underscore my last name, Peluso. And besides posting my latest video tutorials, I also am posting architecture that I'm seeing on a daily basis and things that my students and I are up to so please connect to connect with me on Instagram okay let's jump into the AutoCAD WYSIWYG alright so the first thing that we're gonna do in AutoCAD is we are going to check our units okay so I'm gonna type in units and we're gonna change those units in in this case to architectural and the default unit is inches okay so that's where we're starting now I want to talk a little bit about this idea of WYSIWYG and, and, and the issue that I have with with the way AutoCAD is set up by default okay so you, you need to remember AutoCAD you know it's it's been around a while it goes back further than 25 years before AutoCAD we were drawing by hand and when we drew by hand we had a white sheet of paper so let's actually start there so we had a white sheet of paper when we drew by hand now you open up AutoCAD and the screen which is the sheet of paper is black so we're gonna change that to white so we're gonna right click in the drawing canvas and we're going to choose choose options and under display under the display tab we're gonna go down to colors and the default is 2d model space uniform background and that color is black we're going to change that to white click apply and close and now we have this sheet of paper and right now it's a sheet of grid paper so to turn the grid off we have a little button at the bottom or if you like the the function keys you see it's F7 depending on your keyboard you might have to use function F7 tab F7 but otherwise it's down here we can click that button okay there's our there's our white sheet of paper now let's go back to the layer manager I typed LA the shortcut LA to bring that up and if we look at the AutoCAD colors most of you are drawing in AutoCAD using these index colors usually colors one through seven and then a, maybe some grayscale some half tone well this is the problem this is why I think AutoCAD has set us back 25 years because when we draw using red many of us think okay red equals a thin line weight or a light line weight and then if we're drawing in blue that's a heavier line weight so we're using these colors as from thin to heavy and then some half tone so what we're doing is we're we're not using what you see is what you get when we're making a drawing we see all these colored lines and then in our brains we have to translate that to equal a line weight well why should we do that well we don't have to do that and I'm here to show you how to do it the right way what you see is what you get okay so let's let's continue with this I'm gonna make a new layer I'm gonna call this sheet to represent my sheet of paper and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that that layer is current 
Okay, and I'm going to draw a rectangle from my origin, so from 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to make this sheet 17 in the X and 11 in the Y. So it's going to be an 11 by 17 sheet of paper. Okay, there's my paper. So now I have some idea of scale. Okay, I'm going to go back to my layer manager and I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to call this one heavy or you can think of it as thick and these are where my heavy lines are going to be drawn on okay now in my layer manager notice that, that I have expanded line type and line weight so when you open your layer manager this might be really tight and squished together so you want to open that up so you can see the full words line type and line weight okay here's where I'm going to change the line weight now like many software applications, the line weights are set up in millimeters. There is a place where you can change it if you'd want to change it to inches. But here you see some line weights that we can choose from. And just to really see this clearly, I'm going to change it to one millimeter. Okay, making now making sure that that layer is current. So we're going to make a bunch of layers and draw on them. So we want to make sure those layers are current when we draw. Now I'm just going to draw a line. Okay, so there, here is my line. Now, I don't see any line weights. So to see the line weight in the viewport, so it's set up as what you see is what you get, or WYSIWYG, I'm going to type in the command line weight. And from this line weight settings window that pops up, I need to click on display line weight. And then I can click OK. And there, now we're seeing that line weight being displayed. And if I go back to the layer window, I can look at this in real time and see my changes. So here, that's one millimeter. I'm going to make that 0.7 millimeters. And then you see that line gets a little thinner. And we'll try that again. I'll make it 0.4. And that line continues to get thinner. But this is my heavy line, so I'm going to, for right now, I'm going to keep it at about 0.7 and these settings will vary. Okay, so now that I'm here in the layers window, I'm going to make another new layer. I'm going to call this new layer medium. Okay, for my medium, my medium line weight. So you see it, it kept the line weight of the heavy or the last layer I made. I'm going to make this one 0.4 and I'm going to go ahead and draw another line now as I'm drawing this I can see that I did not make the medium layer current so I'm going to make I'm going to place this on make sure it gets placed back on the medium layer Okay, so if you're having difficulty with it, not seeing the line weights, check to make sure it's on the current layer. Okay, and let's, let's go ahead and make our final line weight layer, and then we'll look at line types. So for my final line weight, I'm going to make this my light layer, and I'm going to set this to 0.3 millimeters. Make sure that it's current, and draw my third line. Okay, so now we're seeing these lines. What you see is what you get. So we're not drawing a red line and saying that's, that's thin, and we're not drawing a purple line and saying that's thick. We're drawing thick and medium and thin lines, and we're seeing those all in real time. Okay, now let's look at making a line type. So I'm going to make uh, a new layer, and I'm going to call it light hidden. Now this I'm going to go ahead and make it current. Light hidden and here where it says line type these are all continuous by default. Continuous line types. I'm going to click on continuous and 
I'm going to need to load in a line type that I want to use. So you see there's all kinds of line types you can you can use to make some interesting drawings. I'm going to go down to hidden. And I'm going to click OK and then make sure that it says hidden under line type. That layer is current. So now when I draw my next line, that's going to be a light. It's a light line weight and it's also hidden. So when you're working with line types, you're going to want to be able to adjust the line type scale. So there's a shortcut which is LT scale. When I click on LT scale, you'll see I'm moving my cursor around. The default is one. So as that value increases, let's say I try five, this, the spacing is greater. It's a looser line type. If I type in LT scale again, and I make it smaller than one, say 0.5, it's tighter, okay, smaller segments and smaller space in between the segments. And sometimes I know that's confusing because say I go to LT scale and I type in say 50. Okay, so now I, I don't know if that's too tight, but actually what it is is the line's not long enough. So we're not seeing, so that would be maybe one segment and then there'd be a, a, an empty space and then another segment. The line's just not long enough to see that. So I'm going to go LT scale and I'll set it back to one. Okay, so now it's just a matter of printing this to a PDF, but we're already pretty sure uh, that our line weights look, look pretty good. I mean, you won't know until you actually send it to a printer or a plotter, but this gives us a good idea. Okay. So let's go ahead. Oh, one more thing I'd like to point out. So in, in, the, in the line weight dialog box, so I'm uh, typing in the shortcut line weight. Uh, you know, with my students, I've, I've you know, worked with them and sometimes they you know, say, hey, my line weights, even though I've gone to line weight and I did what I was supposed to, the line weights aren't showing correctly. Uh, if that's the issue, just make sure you go back here and make sure display line weight is checked on. Also, while we're here, you can make some adjustments to how it shows up in the viewport. And you saw me just do that right now. So I can put this to max, say. So then you get thicker or thinner lines. It has nothing to do with how it's going to print, but in case you just want to view it on your screen a little bit differently, you can, you can do that. You see it's got a little pop-up box that explains what that's all about. Okay, that's one thing. Another thing that I saw with, with some students where their line weights weren't showing up is um, under properties, these should both be by, by layer, line weight and line type. Actually, everything should be by layer. Sometimes um, students were actually changing the line setting right there per line. I wouldn't suggest doing that, and then that caused some issues. So all three of these, the layer, the object color is by layer, the line weight is by layer, and the line type is by layer. Okay, so finally, if we're going to, if we're going to print or plot, I'm just using control P, the universal shortcut there. Now we're lucky now when we print or plot, we can use Adobe PDF. So we can make a PDF instead of sending it directly to a printer or plotter. So you want to set that to Adobe PDF. You want to check your paper size. Now for this print, uh, it's 11 by 17 because that was the size of my, my sheet that I made. Now if you're using 8.5 by 11, you can change that to 8.5 by 11. Okay, so what did we change? We changed Adobe PDF. We set the paper size. So we told it what the printer is we're using, which is PDF. And then paper size 11 by 17, what to plot should be window. And then I'm going to pick my sheet boundary. The next thing is the scale. Okay, fit to paper is the default, which I'm not a big fan if that's the default because 
um, that's scaleless. And typically, our, and, you know, when we're making architectural drawings, we want some sort of scale. So I'm going to uncheck fit to paper. In this case, since we were working in model space, when we were drawing at full scale, I'm going to change this one to one. Okay. Now, it says that it's landscape, but I can tell that it's being printed vertically. So what you need to do if you want it to be true landscape is you need to go into the properties for Adobe PDF and then click on custom properties and then go to layout and set that to landscape. Okay, so that's a little bit of an extra step there. Okay, and you could create a temporary plot file for that. Okay, now you see that it's truly landscape. So again, the settings here, we're changing the printer plotter to Adobe PDF, setting your paper size, <clears throat> plotting to a window, unchecking fit to paper and changing the scale one to one, then going into properties and custom properties, layout and making sure that it's landscape. All right. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like down below. And if you haven't subscribed, remember subscribe to my YouTube. Also connect with me on Instagram. So happy drawing in AutoCAD. See you next time.